Mr. Speaker, the President of the United States. Iraq continues to flaunt its hostility toward America and to support terror. The Iraqi regime has plotted to develop anthrax and nerve gas and nuclear weapons for over a decade. This is a regime that has already used poison gas to murder thousands of its own citizens, leaving the bodies of mothers huddled over their dead children. States like these and their terrorist allies constitute an axis of evil arming to threaten the peace of the world. By seeking weapons of mass destruction, these regimes pose a grave and growing danger. They could provide these arms to terrorists, giving them the means to match their hatred. They could attack our allies or attempt to blackmail the United States. In any of these cases, the price of indifference would be catastrophic. We'll be deliberate, yet time is not on our side. I will not wait on events while dangers gather. I will not stand by as peril draws closer and closer. The United States of America will not permit the world's most dangerous regimes to threaten us with the world's most destructive weapons. That's the real done. thing. He was suggesting it would be military action he, as opposed he, to something he else. He said exactly what he said. He said it well. He didn't suggest anything. If there was anything about last night's speech, it was that it had near-perfect clarity. But a senior administration official after the speech said he didn't necessarily mean to say military action, but it could be he, other action. What do you mean necessarily mean to say? He didn't say. He not only didn't necessarily say, he did not say. But he he said exactly what he said. He seemed to suggest, and therefore, perhaps it isn't that clear. You see, it was, it's perfect clarity. It isn't clear, is it? Oh, I is think it? it is. You made a speech last week in which you said, quote, the best in some cases, the only defense is a good offense. Now, that's a major change of U.S. defense policy, is it not? Have we ever taken a preemptory uh, strike against another country? without them first attacking us? If you think about it, there, we have no choice. A terrorist can attack at any time, at any place, using a range of techniques. It is physically impossible to defend at every time, in every location, against every conceivable technique of terrorism. Therefore, if your goal is to stop it, you cannot stop it by defense. You can only stop it by taking the battle to the terrorists where they are and going after them. Good morning. Thank you all for coming. Uh, just had a uh, breakfast with Vice President Cheney, who, as you all know, has returned uh, from a, a, a lengthy and successful trip to the Middle East. Mr. Vice President, on Iraq, you said we have a lot of allies out there, but I haven't noticed any of the Arab states supporting strong action against Iraq. They seem to want diplomacy to be given a chance. What kind of response did you get? Well, I think, uh, I guess the way I would characterize it is that they are uniformly concerned about the situation in Iraq, in particular about Saddam Hussein's failure to live up to the UN Security Council resolutions that uh, said he'd get rid of all of his weapons of mass destruction. I think one other point that's necess that uh, the Vice President made, which is a good point, is that this is an administration uh, that when we say we're going to do something, we mean it. That um, we are resolved to fight the war on terror. This isn't a short-term uh, strategy for us. That uh, we understand history has called us in action, and we're not going to miss this opportunity to make the world more peaceful and more free. 
Vice President Cheney came back from his trip, he said that uh, many Arab leaders shared the concern about weapons of mass destruction, but did not share the U.S. desire to get rid of Saddam Hussein, said it would be cause instability in the region. How do you read that? I would not expect Saddam's neighbors to be the first people to raise their hands to say, you've got to take tough action against them. I think they look to the United States to lead, and I think the president is leading very clearly. The Arab League announced today that at their meeting on Wednesday, they will say the United States should not preemptively attack Iraq uh, to take out any weapons of mass destruction. Reports from your trip around the Middle East, that Arab country after Arab country said to you, don't do that, Mr. Vice President. Don't you dare attack Iraq. That's not the way that I would describe, uh, first of all, their opinions. Um, I had uh, private confidential meetings uh, at nearly every stop. Um, and uh, those meetings obviously were and need to remain confidential. They're all very concerned about Iraq. They live in the neighborhood. They know Saddam Hussein uh, better than we do. Uh, many of them know that um, right after us, uh, they're high on his list of uh, governments he'd like to do in. Uh, did you leave that region feeling that Arab leaders would basically oppose an American action against Saddam Hussein? No, not at all. What I uh, came away with, Bob, is the sense that uh, they share our concern. I ask that because the public reaction was, if one just read what those leaders said in public, it was, we're unified against any kind of action yeah. against Saddam Hussein. Is yeah. that a correct interpretation would, uh, of the public reactions? Uh, it was mixed, I think, in terms of uh, their public reactions. 